Y'all been asking for this video for a while, so here it is. What's up, cookies? Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome to our community. We love to talk about all things in and around fashion, lifestyle, and we like to have a good old kiki and giggle from time to time. Now, listen, today is one of the many installments that I want to create throughout this year to discuss personal style, the journey of it how to elevate, how to figure it out. And a lot of times you guys ask me about my jewelry because I am known for my rings and ear cuffs and all this other stuff that I wear. And, you know, at first I was like, dang, they keep asking about it, but it's the same things I'm wearing over and over again. But when I really thought about it, especially with the last few videos uh, prior to this, talking about personal style and how, I think this is the year that we reclaim our personal style and kind of go around the trend talk and the aesthetics talk. Now, listen, there will be trend talk still on this channel, but we will navigate it very differently. But I was like, you know what? My jewelry is the cherry on top to my personal style. It is very defining of the woman I am, who I've become, my different experiences. And I really thought about how I have obtained this jewelry collection I'm going to share with you guys today, but it really is um, one of my favorite parts about getting dressed. And sorry for the plane going over, but I think that jewelry is a very personal thing despite the trends that come and go. There's so many trends this year that even the way that they're naming some of them, like one of them was motif jewelry. I'm like, nameplate, ghetto jewelry is some of y'all like to call it, but like, it's, it's not really a trend to me. I don't really feel like personally I follow fashion, I mean, uh, jewelry trends, unless there's like a certain amount of availability with, let's say, clip on earrings from the 80s, you know? Then I'm like, okay, let's talk about something. But either way, I wanted to talk to you guys about my introduction to, to the jewelry that I have and the reason why I feel so connected to jewelry. And I'll go through my collection outside of just the rings and the air cuffs because there's some things that you guys probably have not seen that I wear on special occasion or when I'm around my family. But anyway, I was really young when I started to notice that jewelry was a very big meaning for my family, especially my mom's side of the family. And um, funny story, weird story, it might come across really like, oh, that's kind of dark. <laughs> but it is my truth and I know that it has been done at least once in our family. My grandmother and my grandfather, well, really my grandfather, uh, owns a funeral home in Aruba. This is my mom's side of the family. And there will be times where families of the deceased would not pick up gold and silver over a certain amount of time, nor would some of them want to keep it. You know, they would just be like, just do away with it. We don't want this jewelry. And my grandmother at one point took gold that they accumulated over time at the funeral home and melted down jewelry to create nameplates for all the girls and all the granddaughters in the family. It's a little weird because it has like this spirit and energy to it, but that was my introduction to jewelry. And a lot of times in my mom's side of the family, we would be gifted gold, um, little trinkets, jewelry trinkets to uh, go along with different milestones in our life, uh, coming of age, birthdays. And also on my father's side of the family, jewelry has a very spiritual connection to the person that's wearing it. My grandmother always told me, don't let people try on your rings. Their spirit will connect or take away from your energy. And whether or not you believe in that type of stuff, it's what my family believed and I still believe in it to this day. Now here and there I'll let people try on the, the cuff and whatnot because I know it's such like a, a statement and people really, uh, I can feel when people have good intentions when they talk about my jewelry and I'll allow them to try it on every so often, not all the time. But on both sides of my family, jewelry has a very um, unique individual experience and 
fashion wise to me, you know, when I get dressed, I can pick and choose when I put on my rings or certain earrings or whatever. And it really brings a look full circle. So jewelry is very important to me. Now, obviously I will go through what you guys have already seen and kind of tell you where I got them from and um, whatever comes to mind once I'm going through them. But one of my first, like, when I really started to invest, you know what, how can I, let me, what, what can I do? Let me, hold on. <laughs> let me think about what I'm doing right now. Cause I'm up right now. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to stop playing with y'all. Okay. So these little trinkets are, and please excuse my fingernails. I have not got my nails done in over a month of Sundays, okay? But these are like the little trinkets that my family would gift us. So this is the other half, my cousin has this. These are best cousin um, uh, little pendants. These little tiny ones I've had since I was a baby, a little heart, a little anchor, um, and a little cross, because my mom's side of the family is Catholic. Another one, my mother got me this, and this also has very many miniature crosses and hearts, but this says the best daughter. I am her only daughter. Or no, it says special daughter. I am. Anyway, but it's so small. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully this camera can pick it up. Oh my gosh. I know this camera has been doing amazing things. I will tag it below. Um, but yeah, that... I was wearing when I was a little girl in preschool. And then this is an um, I Love Aruba trinket that my family gifted me as well. The nameplate that my grandmother got all of us looks like this. And all of our mothers have a larger size version of this. But my middle name is Maria. That's why mine is Maria. And really my, my family and my friends that I've had for over 20 years, really some 30 years at this point or more, um, they know me as Maria. It's my middle name, one of my middle names. Another thing that is really special to me is my grandmother's earrings. My grandmother passed away, my, my mom's mother, passed away from Alzheimer's and dementia. And during that time, she would take jewelry that she was wearing or jewelry that she had accumulated. My grandmother has so much jewelry and she would hide them around the house or they would find fragments of the jewelry pieces broken in different pieces of the house. So a lot of, of her jewelry, from what I understand, is lost and gone. And I have two pieces of hers that I treasure and want a set of these. I do not, I do not wear these earrings at all. I just hold them in a box and look at them when I really miss her. But these are her globe dangle earrings. Um, they look like they have flowers, but to me they're like little globes little floral globes and I love them so much. They're so beautiful. I don't wear them. And another item of hers, it, it's kind of like banged up and it's just, it's dainty as heck, but I wear it all the time. Is this ring that you guys see me wear a lot. You can see that the ring has been damaged a little bit and I don't care, like it, it, it's molded to my finger in the best way, but it's a very thin gold. So I have to be careful when I'm doing certain things. I do have to take it off sometimes, but it has different colored gems and it's missing one gem at the top. Never got it replaced, but I cherish it. And it's one of my favorite rings that I wear. Another thing that's really special, um, I that I feel like there's some jewelry, obviously I lost when I was a little kid, but my Aunt Martika on my mom's side, my mom's um, sister-in-law, she got me this bracelet from Toos, I think, when I graduated from high school. There is a bear in a little circle that is missing, but I loved silver as well when I was growing up. Although my family was big on gifting gold, I wore a lot of silver, and I came across one of my mom's old jewelry bags when I was growing up, and I begged her, Mommy, Mommy, please, can I have this? Can I have this? She didn't wear it. She worked in a hospital. She would just wear her, her wedding band, her her bracelet, um, her watch, and that was it. Like, she never really wore any of her jewelry and some, like, dangle earrings, and that was it. But she wouldn't let me have it until I was, like, 18 and good, rightfully so, because I probably would have lost these things. But these are her bangles. And I feel like a lot of people who are from 
you know, Caribbean descent, even African descent, they have these really cool bangles that have these openings. You could twist them and make them smaller or not, even in gold. And I was so excited when I got to get this for my mom. Finally, I do need to clean them and I do have a, um, a cleaning cloth for them. Another item that I took from my mom, this really needs to be clean. I'm going to show you the before and after. So this is one of her rings. Um, also with a floral detail on it, one of her globes. It is solid all the way through. It is not a hollow ring. This is one of my jewelry cloths. It's kind of dingy and dirty, but it has a shiner and then it has a cleaner on the inside. So I'm going to take this. I have to be careful because this sometimes gets my fingers dirty. And now she's clean again. So it takes like months for it to get to this level, but yeah, I just clean it up and I get so happy. I feel like I can only wear this on my ring finger, but we believe that that's bad luck in my family. I know many families are like that. So it doesn't really fit any of my fingers anymore. But um, if I'm feeling safe about it, I'll wear my pinky and I'll put a plastic spiral around the ring just to keep it tighter. But yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces from my mom's collection. Another piece that's pretty filthy is this bangle of hers. I haven't worn it in a long time. I kind of just realized that I still have it and I'm going to start wearing it again with my Tiffany's cuff and layer it up. But it is so beautiful. You see how dark it is now. But this is also solid silver. It's solid silver and it is gorgeous. This one's going to take a little bit longer time, but I'll do one part of it to show you how these cloths are so effective. Um, and, you know, you have to be careful when you're cleaning your jewelry, um, silver jewelry, because it takes away from it every time, especially when you get it um done professionally it takes away and this is another piece from my mom's collection that i was like girl if you don't get give me this jewelry come on now it has a little bit of turquoise and coral in there it's one of my favorite favorite pieces from her very special to me and i actually wore these silver pieces a lot during college um right after i received them and then i gifted myself these so these are my version of the uh <laughs> bangles that everyone has from the Caribbean in the silver. I don't have a gold set yet. That's something I do want to get. It's part of my wish list for my jewelry collection in due time. But, you know, they get all bent out of shape and crazy looking. But I feel like when I wear these, they're a testament to my culture um, and my family. And I love them. And I, get, I think I got these in Bermuda, actually, when we went on a family vacation there. What else is from my very beginnings of jewelry? Oh, so this piece is very special. My father had a very good friend named Mr. Youssef, and he would take different pieces of jewelry, whether they were spoons, forks, knives, all different types of household items that were made in different metals, and he would bend them and create pieces like so. So this is a fork for a little gem in there, and my father gifted it to me. And it is one of my favorite silver pieces still to this day. Very special. But, oh, here's a weird story. Okay. I went to FIT and one night in the dorm's bathroom on my floor, I went to go wash my hair one night and I found this ring on the sink and no one was looking for it. No one knew anything about it. It was just on the sink. And I'm like, maybe it was someone's visitor that just never came back or told them that they lost this ring. This is an original... Um, this is a Native American created piece. It's actually signed by the person that made it. It is sterling silver as well. It has coral and turquoise and an actual baby bear claw in it that has weathered just a little bit, but is one of my favorite rings from, from that period of me just wearing silver on silver on silver. I love turquoise as well. And um, it's still fit hold on it actually fits on this hand and i wore it with my silver rings and people in college actually knew me to always wear very large pieces i used to have this 
wired ring, gold wire ring with a huge piece of amethyst. And I wore it all the time and I would just take it off whenever I would be typing whatever, but I wore it and it like took over basically my whole hand. But I loved having large rings that would become problem for me when it came time to work. But I was like, you know what? If anyone ever comes forward and can prove that they had this ring, they can have it back. But I also feel like God gave it to me. So <laughs> I've got this, I believe, when Carlos and I went to Mexico. I don't know. I don't think this is real turquoise, but this is real sterling silver hammered. And I just love it. It doesn't feel like real turquoise. They said it is. It feels too lightweight and man-made, honestly. So I don't think it is real turquoise. We didn't pay as much as it would have been if it was real turquoise anyway. So I wasn't mad about it. I don't really know what material this is. And I also have another ring that comes with this. But it was totally silver when I purchased this. Um, I purchased this at a flea market in Brooklyn when I was out and about one day with my cousin Noel. And it turned into like this gold-ish looking color. Even when I try to clean it, it doesn't, it doesn't return to the original silver that I purchased it in. It was way more muted than this. Um, but I don't mind how it patinaed. I really don't. I, I think it's gorgeous. And it makes me feel like <laughs> some type of Marvel character. But it's... You know, it's a story attached to it. My cousin, you know, I, I, my cousin Noel, we love going to concerts and festivals and just exploring New York in different ways. And that was one of those many things. Like we came across this random flea market and thing in uh, Bushwick. Yeah, we were loving the street art. We were loving the looks of the people, the food, all the things. And that was one of the pieces I saw. And I was like, oh, I got to get that. These are two items that I actually picked up from a vintage store. And I don't normally buy a lot of jewelry in vintage stores unless I'm moved to do so. But they're a bit big for me. So I have to replace these um, spiral plastic that holds them tighter. But what is this? Tiger's eye. And it also has like these little bits of gems or some type of stone in there. But I thought it was beautiful. And I think I got it for like 70 bucks. And it is one of like, I wear it when I'm feeling like I just want to be dripped in silver. And actually this um, black diamond, actually it's black diamond and gold, but bl little black diamond uh, pieces are trending this year. But I thought that was pretty special. And, and I also bought this at the same time. This is a very rare occurrence. The pearl with this with this setting around it, that's also pearl that is very rare and old school, super vintage. I thought it was really beautiful. I love the detail on the side of the ring as well. And yeah, I felt pretty lucky to find this pearl. And the way that it's set, I'm like, ooh, that's real. That's nice. That's real nice. I think I paid also 80 bucks or so for this one as well. Um, in a vintage store in Brooklyn. Brooklyn has some really good vintage stores, even though some of them don't know how to buy anymore. No shade to them, but it's just true. But they have some really great pieces. I also, so, oh, I got this in London. I got this in London at a flea market. I forget where. Piccadilly? Pick it. Oh, don't get me to line. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. But also, because of the love of turquoise that I have, I was like, oh, I got to have this. But also this was silver when I purchased it and it has turned into this gold-ish uh, appeal. I don't care. It's so good. Also a little too big for me. I could wear it on my pointer finger, but it can be a little loose by the end of the day. Um, too loose for my, my uh, middle and too loose even for my thumb. So I would rock it really on my, my pointer finger but I don't wear this as much as when I got it because it does get loose on me and yeah so moving right along get into some of the more like costume jewelry that I really love and I'll yeah I'll go from there so this is one of my favorite pieces that I actually don't wear as much because they're heavy on my ears I hate I do not like feeling weight on my ears at all but these were from rihanna's fenty brand when they were still out and about but i love these earrings i thought they were so special and beautiful they are weighty to me 
And, but I just, I had to have them. I was like, oh my God, I love the jewelry pieces. There were more pieces that I really wanted from the brand, but I never got in. I never got a chance to get it before they shut down the website. I could see if there's more and just show you guys examples on the page, but um, on the video, I mean, but these are stunning. They're so beautiful. They're just, yeah, they're one of my faves that I just like. Every once in a while, I'll put them on, but I have to be in the mood for that weight. I also have to be in the mood for the weight of these. So I got these from Julia Lang. She's um, She has these vintage drop that she does, and she also has jewelry that she has designed, but these are from her curated vintage drops, and I love these clip-ons. I need to get the plastic piece that can go on the back so it doesn't feel so harsh when it's squeezing on the back of my earring, but I thought these were stunning. I was like, ooh, these with a baseball cap, like Julia Lang always says, but I'm like, I love these. So these were actually my first purchase from her. Um, I love her curation. She's, she has an amazing eye for the drops that she does. This is a piece that I actually bought when I was working at Neiman Marcus for a short period of time. Working at that store was problematic. Them people were very crazy. Uh-uh. For, for the streets. At Hudson Yards, Neiman's. That's why I shut down so quick. Because the spirit of that, that place alone, it just it didn't last at all. But anyway, this is from Lily Frost. Lilia Frost. L. Frost. Child, don't get me I think this says Lulia Frost, but she was um, she has these pieces where you can get pendants and just create this whole personalized. I like personalized uh, jewelry. I'm not really into like the Pandora bracelets, but like necklaces and stuff like that. I'm really into, but I loved the weight of her necklace and the detail of it. The chain link aesthetic but I was like I have to get the number three so three is a special number for me and my dad um we it's it's like my favorite numbers are three five and fifteen his is three all the way around and threes just have this way of multiplying in our life as a family that we just we're on high alert when it comes to three if certain signs come in threes and then it's my it's my green light to go, go, go and keep moving with spirit. But yeah, had to get the number three. Um, haven't worn it in a long time, but I found it the other day, like in my stash. I was like, oh my God, I love this. Another piece I've been really loving lately. And I will do a separate video to show all the Dylan Lex pieces that I've accumulated. But one of the pieces I've been wearing on repeat is this cuff. I love Pearl. And I thought this was so special. So it has the earring back here so it can go on your lower lobe. And then it has this clip on at the very top so it can just connect and hold on tight there. Doesn't feel heavy at all. It's a very great weight. Um, and also with the clip on, it just kind of gives it a little bit more connection to the ear. So I really love that. But I was like, y'all, this one is dope. I need this. This is really cool. I love this clip on. Another pearl costume type of piece that I have actually is a set of two and it's from a black owned brand called Only Made. I love these cuffs, these pearl cuffs. You guys have seen me rock these plenty of times. I love wearing them on one ear, on either ear. It doesn't matter. It's my one of my favorite things to stack with. And I'll continue with the ear. So I also had this piece from a brand called Ferris, I believe. I picked it up from uh, Kif Women's here, I'll put this. Yeah, it's from a brand called Farif. And it's super cute. They have really cool aesthetic when it comes to their silver and gold. This is gold plated. This is not um, real gold, but I thought it was really unique. And then I have, y'all, I still have the earring that I got pierced with almost two years ago. Yeah, I know. We're going to get we're gonna get another stud for this piercing. And then I just have a regular globe earring um, or dome no, actually, no, these are not my dome earrings. I have little baby dome earrings, but this is actually my initials. When I find the name of the brand, I will put it on there. I got it from 260 Sample Sale, but I have the G and then I have the C on this side. And then I also have, this is a brand based out of London. Oh my gosh, the name is escaping me right now, but it has a little 
the jewels on top and then the basic band on the bottom and it connects. I really love that. I feel like I would not get my actual ears pierced at these places where I had the cusp because I feel like it would hurt so bad. And then I recently uh, got this for Christmas, the Hermes cuff with the lizard natural skin on the side. I've been rocking this a lot. I love my cuffs, but I have the C pierce um, stud on this side for CG Carolyn Gray. Oh, and another piece that's super personalized, Carlos and I both have this pendant. He got it for us for our first year anniversary of dating. And he got this from a jeweler called Benny the Jeweler in Queens. Y'all, I don't know. But it has a uh, diamond all in there. And it's really sweet. So his first and last name, Carlos Gaviria. My first and last name, Carolyn Gray. We have those same initials, which is crazy. Will I take his last name when we marry? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. But it is really cool that we are both CG. So I call this CG squared. And I think he got the idea to get our necklaces from that. So I wear this all the time. It's like my version of a promise ring. Um, love that for me. <laughs> and then I also have this great piece. I was actually gifted as a muse from the brand Black Owned as well. Concept 26. This is from their puzzle collection. And it has that diamond stud in there i love this piece and i also love the necklace that it came with it's a very fine and dainty chain link i thought this was really cute they have a couple different uh variations of this puzzle piece but i love it i actually want to get a shorter neck um a shorter chain so i can stack this i think these are the same length so i don't want them bumping into each other so i'm going to get a shorter uh link for this to get on so it can stack nicely on my neck there and then obviously you guys know these rings this is from a brand from Wahadun NYC this is a collection based off of bugs so Ranin is a designer she created these and this also this had a brother this had a brother and I lost the brother I also got from Wahadun, and I need to clean it. This one's a little bit harder to clean because of all the crevices. This is actually an ear cuff from the brand, and it curves around, also from the same bug collection. Really cool. Ranin has a really amazing eye for fashion and jewelry, obviously. She, is re she really has a knack, really amazing personal style. Um, but yeah, that is from her brand. And then... Also, my grandmother's ring. I'm just going to put my stack together than one that I normally do. And I also have this um, this band with the diamonds encrusted as well. That hammered gold. I, can't, I don't know if you guys are seeing it. Okay, that looks a bit clearer to me. But it has that gold around the rim. And then the diamonds in, inside and encrusted, I guess the word is right. And that hammered metal all the way around i put that in the middle and then i add this ring from the brand aziza handcrafted i forget the name of this green material here but i love the color green and i love gold and i love this flat um design too it's really cool almost looks like a haircut a uh, flat top haircut so i thought that was really cool and that's my stack for that finger and then I have been I lost one of my Aziza handcrafted fingertip rings in gold I I feel like it is in this house it flew off one time when I was doing an Instagram live and I'm like where the hell is my ring but anyway these are also from Aziza handcrafted these are my favorite fingertip rings from her she makes them in gold and silver and then there's another material that she also creates these in, but I never leave the house without them. And then recently, the same brand where I got these studs from, I got this gold ring from. It's very thin, very dainty, but I'm beginning my stack of like gold rings. Oh, my finger's a little swollen today. Okay, this I'm gonna have to put some soap and some kind of grease to get that off later. It's a little, it's, a, it's on there. I'm gonna tell you, I have big knuckles, so I have to just be careful. Like, it's a little tight. It's a little, it's it's a, all right, there we go. But 
yeah, I'll keep them on for the day. And yeah, so th those are my rings that y'all always ask me about. I changed them here and there. I feel like I kind of want to rock. Oh no, that's going to cover it. Okay, maybe I don't have a ring to put with this. Hold on. If I didn't care about the superstition, I would rock this, but no. And I mix and match my metals. I, I don't see nothing wrong with it to each their own. Everyone has their thing about it. I get it. I'm going to rock mine to mix in. And then for my most special pieces that I got for myself, y'all know about the Tiffany cuff. I got it for my birthday last year. This is the medium size, the original Elsa Peretti design in the medium width. They come in different sizes depending on your wrist. This is not hollow it's solid you cannot bend it at all to make it smaller or bigger it is made the way that it is it has patinaed really nicely since i've gotten it i love this cuff it is my favorite even if i have something a sleeve that covers it i'm probably wearing it still and then i got this quite a few years ago this is my rolex platinum oyster yacht master watch this is, I like to call it granddaddy. The journey of this watch is very special to me and I love it because it is very not expected of someone with my stature, my small little wrist to have and it is my boss. It's the boss and I love this watch. I do want something smaller and lighter I've broken the, the face of this watch once. I was working out at Equinox one day and it slipped out of my bag and it hit the, um, the tiling in the bathroom on the corner and it just cracked it right through and I went straight to a jeweler right near on Wall Street that specialized in watches that sold uh, certified sold Rolex watches like this and they fixed it within a month for me $4,000. <laughs> but I was like, all right, cool. And Greg, the jeweler, Greg Unit, the jeweler, actually um, maintained this for me as well, cleaned it up for me. And um, yeah, one of my most special pieces. So that is my jewelry collection. We can talk about jewelry trends on another day because I think it's actually a really fun. Why does my hair look like that? Wait a minute. I feel like my hair has been doing whatever it wants. This is definitely still the sacred from the sacred hair wash. I've only recurled it once, um, but I've been rocking it. She's been doing her thing. I wore a hat last night. She's still giving body yada yada with the shine. I've only put oil in it twice also since I've washed it. Washed it. So just if y'all was wondering, but um, or not wondering, sorry. I don't know. Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all whatever. But yeah, this is my jewelry collection. And at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, jewelry is something that should speak to you always. I think despite the trends, just go with your gut. If you see something in a store and you're like, oh my God, I love that. Or you see someone wearing a piece and you know, it's unique and you know, figure out who created it and, and find out if they can make one for you. I think jewelry is something that speaks more to the soul than actual clothing does. And they become heirloom pieces, legacy pieces, things that you want your daughter or niece to have or, you know, that you die with, that you wear in your grave or whatever. I just, I think it carries your spirit in a very different way. So when you see a piece out and about in transit, um, there's a reason why you're like, you, you're, you're, your energy picks up a little bit when you see something that you really like. And I encourage you to dig deep and, and allow yourself to feel that way when you see a jewelry piece, because that is something that just connects to your soul for whatever reason. I love turquoise. It's a reason for it. We have Iroquois in my family, as far as Native Americans are concerned. We have Caribbean Native, Native Caribbean Indian in our family, and they wore turquoise. And I've always just had a natural connection to turquoise jewelry. And I think that it's very special. I've always loved the, the gold in our family because it comes with a story and I love gold jewelry. Even though I feel that silver for me is my better metal. I, I don't know if that's true. Like I never went to a specialist to see what colors 
work well and best against my skin tone. Some people are meant for gold. Some people are meant for silver. I feel that I am a silver person, but I wear all the mixed in. I feel that if you want to figure out more about who you are style wise, maybe try looking at some jewelry first. And I don't care if I'm wearing something classic, edgy, modern, muted, colorful, it doesn't matter. My jewelry is going to go because I say it does. And that's why I think jewelry is such a powerful conversation and evolution of who you are. And I think that um, when you look at someone's jewelry, it can personify them even more. Who is texting me so much? But yeah, that is my jewelry, my jewelry journey. And the whys behind or the how behind I got them in my collection. And I'm going to clean some of these now, okay? Now that I've shown y'all my business, now I got to clean some of these silvers all the way through and rock them. Because look, at I feel like I want to stack this. I want to stack these and just wear them together. I don't know. Let's see. Let's let's see how... Oh, wait a minute now. I wouldn't wear the, the thin ones with these, but because they'll make this scratch up a bit more than I actually wanted to over time. And then what if I don't want to wear my watch one day? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Crackle and pop. Now this I wouldn't mind wearing my, um, no, that's too noisy now. That's too noisy. How else could I, but I could do it with this. I could do it with, I could do it with, listen, Oh, wait, my wish list really quickly. I really want, what is this, Spinelli C Coloni? <laughs> when I've learned how to pronounce it, I'm sure I'll be able to afford one of their pieces, but I want one of their chained up rings, okay? And I also, I've always wanted like bangles this thin stacked up all the way on my wrist. Like I want a full stack of thin silver bangles on my wrist. And then I also want some new studs for this, these piercings. I just, I need someone to get this out of my ear because I cannot unscrew it off. But those are my wish list, wish list pieces for jewelry really quickly. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. What do y'all think? What are some of your favorite jewelry pieces? What does jewelry mean to you? Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Come below. I'll see y'all in the next episode. And we'll further discuss personal style in many different ways. <laughs>